Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today played 14 seasons in the NBA, winning a championship with the Boston Celtics in 2008. And because he was so good on yesterday's show, we asked him to stick around for one more. Kendrick Perkins is back. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be back. Thanks for staying. Thanks. So yesterday we spent a lot of time talking about the Celtics. Today I want to talk more about the Thunder. So you made it back to the finals with OKC in 2012. Ooh. And that was Russ, KD, Harden, you. What was the dynamic like for you guys on that team? Well, you know, we had came together, but it was still... We had, we had came together, but it was still like... It was a family, but it wasn't all the way in. You know what I mean? Guys were still trying to find themselves. So at the end of the day, they were still trying to decide whether it was Russell team or KD team. So it was basically when we got to the finals, it was my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn. And then you have James, who's the sixth man of the year coming in off the bench. And, you know, ball might not swing his way. And it was just, it was difficult, but you know, for that, for that young group to make it to the finals was even special. We lost it because Miami just had more experience. Mm -hmm. One of those guys was KD, and in his MVP speech, he talked about you guys and your relationship and the late night calls and texts that you would send to him. What were you saying to him? Well, I was just telling them the real. You know, sometimes um, a lot of guys, a lot of people don't understand, like, that we all are human beings, and just because they're superstars don't mean nothing. You know, they still have their highs and they have their lows. And um, they may not show it to the open world, and you know, just because you can have everything in life money-wise, that still don't solve problems, you know what I mean? So, or if you're going through something mentally on a basketball court. So, you know, me and Kay KD used to call me, after games, if he was frustrated, I mean, literally, we would stay on the phone at 3, 4 in the morning, and I'd just break it down to him. And I'd tell him if he did something good, I'd tell him if he did something bad. It would never be what to the point where I'm biased, where I don't want him to get mad at me. I was always straightforward with him. He was appreciative of you being honest with him. He is the... Uh, he's the most humble superstar I've ever been around in my life. Hmm. Like, when I say low maintenance guy, I mean, just cares about basketball, but highly intelligent. Are you guys still close? That's little brother. So you were not afraid to stand up to anyone. Am I right on that, actually? No, you're right. Nobody? Nobody. Okay. What was it like, though, when Kobe threw a punch? At me? Did he throw a punch at you? He did in yeah. OKC, yeah. Yeah, so... It was like Kobe, like really like stop it like this is a problem you really don't want like <gasps> you know i had to you like, said oh. that to him yeah i told him that. And what did he say he was like nah it's all in the game i was like yeah i know but chill like because <laughs> it, it, it's just it just gets to the point that like at the end of the day yeah we all hoop and you have certain levels of uh, but at the end of the day we are all grown men right so my whole thing is, is that I have three boys, right, kids, mm -hmm. right? And I can't never let they, I can't never let show signs of weakness in front of my kids. Like, in front of my kids, I could never be a, a punk or something like that or get punked by anybody. Yeah. You feel me? I feel you. That's so, fair. Yeah. No, you can't let them see that, even <laughs> if it's Kobe. Yeah. No. Or whoever. Did coaches ever subtly kind of tell you, like, hey, I need you to go out there, get in this guy's head, get him out of the game? They never told me that, but I knew at certain times while I was, when I was getting subbed in the game, it was for that reason. You knew? Yeah. You just knew? Yeah. No one had to say anything to you? Uh, I already knew. Like, for example, I knew when Doc, like, when we was going over scouting reports, like, when we used to play Orlando Magic, and Doc used to say, his message used to be like, so he was going over personnel, and he'd be like, hey, Perk, and he'll say it like aggressive. Hey, you got Dwight Howard, no help, and you know what to do. Ooh. So it's like, okay, cool. Gotcha. You know what it is, <laughs> right? So I'm like, all right, cool. That's amazing. You're yeah. just a weapon. Yeah, just a weapon. <laughs> but, but you know what's crazy, though? It's something that, like, and I think right now, I do owe, my, I do owe Doc an apology. Oh. 
because for the simple fact that when I got traded from OKC and I got bought out by Utah, I had a choice to either go to the Clippers or Cleveland, and I did go to Cleveland. And Doc called me and reached out, and I and and I never really and we me and Doc we've been on talking terms for like two or three years now, back to our uh-huh. usual self, but. I really wanted to apologize to him on camera about that because I should have went to the Clippers. What? Yeah, I should have. I should have killed my loyalty to Doc. He raised me. Wow, is this the first time you're saying that? Yeah. Have you told Doc that? No, I haven't. Why didn't you? Because we back cool. We just burst it under the rug. No, I'm we- saying why. Why didn't you go to the Clippers? Because at the time I was ring chasing, so I was looking at. I was looking at, it was in March, I'm looking at Cleveland, I'm like, for sure they coming out the East. I'm looking at Doc Clipper team, and it was kind of up for grabs. You still had Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, which was kind of, they needed a leader at that time, which if I would have been there, who knows what, what could have happened, but. DeAndre would have been out. No, right? he was there. He, but if you came. No, if I would have came, I would have just been a mentor to him and been a backup center. Okay. So I felt after a while, you know, me and Doc didn't talk for like two years. After that? Yeah, he was very, he was highly disappointed in me about it. Wow. Yeah, so we just got we got back on good terms. But I never apologized to him, but I, I did. I, I think I made the wrong decision with that one. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, so I lost, basically I, I lost Doc as a, basically a father figure for two years because I ain't talked to him. We didn't talk because he was upset with me, really. Or his feelings was hurt, but yeah, yeah. How did you guys get back on good terms? I just kept reaching out to him until he responded. Oh, he wouldn't even respond to yeah. you? Yeah, I made him talk to me. Wow. Yeah. I made him talk to me. I mean, I just like I think back to that championship team because that was such a special group of guys. Right. And I don't know, were KG and Paul still cool with Doc? Yeah. 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 And then you've got the Ray issues. Rondo's still cool with Doc. I know Rondo. Yeah, yeah. Rondo's back cool with Doc too. Right. I just never knew that the two of you. Well, we never it never made it public, but what it did kind of come out that I chose the Cavs over the Clippers. Yeah. I did choose the Cavs over the Clippers and the Bulls, which Tills was coaching the Bulls. <laughs> but that here. was a messed up situation. Yeah. But I should have went with, with Doc, though. Wow. And I regret that to this day. Wow. Well, that's huge. I'm sure he's watching. He's been on the show. Okay, yeah. Loves but, you. Well, my bad, Doc. You know I apologize, but we good now. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that we could help yeah. you get that message <laughs> out to him.